Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. In the years that I've been buying luxury goods, I've made many mistakes. Some were gut-wrenching and others stung a little bit less. But today I wanted to share my top five and hopefully help you to avoid them. I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Number one, leaving leather goods inside of boxes. Now, I love the idea of being able to put leather goods inside of boxes because it makes it a lot easier to be able to store them. You don't have things all over the place. I totally get it. However, I also learned the hard way that leather needs to breathe. Leather needs to be able to be out in an open area for a few different reasons. The first one being that if you do have your leather goods enclosed in a box, it can actually cause the leather to dry out. And once it dries out, it can end up cracking, so it will ruin the item. Another thing is if you do end up living in a type of uh, environment that is a little bit more tropical or you have um, you have more moisture in the air, if you do have your leather good inside of a box, it can actually cause it to get a little bit more moisture. That moisture can lead to mildew, it can lead to mold. Uh, so that's another thing. And the last thing is what happened to me. The leather good can actually end up bubbling. Yes, you heard that correctly, it can end up bubbling. Now, I have a Josephine wallet. Once upon a time, I had three Josephine wallets. They were all in the um, they were all in different prints. So I had the Monogram, the Damia Zor, and the Damia Ben. Love that wallet. And I used to store all of my small leather goods inside of boxes because again, I like the fact of having everything nice and clean, everything was labeled, it was perfect. And unfortunately, unbeknownst to me, because of where I was storing them, it was a little too hot, you know, between the dust bag and the box, it caused the leather to bubble. So this is the pouch that goes in the Josephine wallet. This is removable and all three wallets had bubbling within, within the little pouch. So I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it. Hang on, all right. Do you guys see that? All that little bubbling all the way down and on this side as well. I don't, this one's a little bit harder for me to show you, but anyways, it has bubbles all the way through. So I was, I was very bummed out, you know, and it makes sense because where I live in the summertime, it can get very, very hot. So once again, since I did have it in the dust bag and I had it in the box and I had it in this, in this area of my room, it got way, way too hot and it caused it to bubble. So nowadays I end up leaving all of my small leather goods outside of the boxes. The boxes are, com you know, somewhere completely different. They're all in their dust bags and um, that makes me feel a whole lot better and so far so good I haven't had any issues you know but uh, and you don't have to have your items in dust bags either uh, I personally like dust bags I'm a little bit paranoid uh, so after I film all these guys go back in their dust bags it just makes me feel better you know what I mean don't judge me <laughs> but uh, as long as you have your bags or your small leather goods in an area where the leather can breathe as long as it's not confined to a small space where it can get very very hot or it can get too humid you should be okay Okay, but um, yeah, so I would advise once again to leave your items outside of the boxes to each their own. I know that some people are 50-50 on this, but um, after what I went through with this, I definitely don't want it to happen to my handbags. Number two, using towels to stuff the bags. Now, whether it was a bath towel or a beach towel, what have you, I used to use towels and I really liked the fact that I was able to help the bag maintain their shape in a sense, but I also learned the hard way that some of the materials that the towels are made of aren't necessarily the best for stuffing bags. There are a few reasons that I would advise against using this type of material. The first one being that it does end up adding weight to the bag and it can end up stretching out the leather as time goes by while your bag is being stored. Another reason is because a lot of these towels do have a type of material that when it is in an enclosed area, it can actually create a type of moisture. Now that moisture can create either mold or mildew or a musty type of smell and that smell is extremely difficult to remove when it comes to, to a handbag. Some people have had great success removing that smell with uh, with baking soda other people have used Febreze I personally have used um I don't know if they're still around, but they're like little bag candies that end up removing uh, removing any type of smell from a bag, which is great. Uh, one of the things that I would also advise against using when it comes to that mildew musty smell would be to not use dryer sheets or to spray perfume on the, on the bag. Because whenever you do something like that, you're actually not helping to absorb that, uh, that smell. You're actually adding more to it. So in a sense, you're adding layer on top of layer of a smell, so it might be even harder to remove all of those at once. So like I said, some people have had great success when it comes to baking soda. If you have any, um, if you have had any success when it comes to removing that type of, um, you know, that type of smell from your bags, let us know in the comment section down below what has worked out for you. 
Now, uh, like I said, I did use towels in the past. I don't use them anymore because of those reasons. And one of the things that has really worked out for me is using air paper. I love air paper or these, uh, these little pillows because they help the bag to maintain their shape. It doesn't add weight to it and it also doesn't create any type of moisture. There have been times that these have kind of, um, they're not as poofy as they were when I first put them in the bag. And even when that happens, they don't release a smell. It doesn't cause any type of moisture or anything like that so I have been using these guys for years and I have been I have been very very happy with the outcome like I said I've had no issues with mildew with mold or you know with it altering the um, the shape of my bag and these you can end up getting them with any type of package that you get home you know whether you order something online or you can actually go on to Amazon itself or uline.com and you can order these they have different sizes I really like this size in particular just because it's a little bit easier to to, you know, to kind of put inside of the bags because I have, for the most part, I guess you could say I have small to medium bags. But anyways, this works out the best for me. And when you do go, if you do end up using these to stuff your bags, I would also advise not to overstuff them to the point where they're going to be, you know, popping at the brim or anything like that. You just want to help the bag to maintain its shape and not necessarily overstuff them with these either because that can also cause um, the leather to stretch out. So either way, whether you use uh, this type of air paper, there's also like handbag pillows that people end up uh, making or that end up purchasing for their bags, which are great because they also have a type of material that is able to breathe and it doesn't necessarily cause cause that mildew or anything like that. So out of preference, I always say that ear pillows, but um, I would definitely advise against using any type of towels or blankets or anything that can cause that type of moisture to, you know, to end up affecting how your bag ends up uh, wearing as time goes by. Number three, color transfer. Color transfer isn't just limited to the exterior of a bag. It can also happen on the interior, especially if that interior has the type of lining that is a little bit more saturated with dye, and it can cause that dye to rub off on another small leather good that's a little bit lighter, or maybe a different material that absorbs that color very, very easily. I had this happen to me with Louis Vuitton Demi Azure and Louis Vuitton Demi Ben. And uh, back in the day, I used to have a classic Speedy 35 in Demi Ben, and you guys know that that this print is my favorite. That beautiful rich red looks insanely gorgeous, but it is also heavily saturated. So one day I was thinking nothing of it and um, I didn't necessarily have time to switch out my items from the bag that I was carrying before. And I just decided to throw those items inside of my Damien Ben. One of those items being the uh, Louis Vuitton cosmetic case in the Damien Azor. I don't have either one of them to show you, unfortunately, um, but I will incorporate some pictures either on the description box below if you guys want to see exactly what items I'm talking about. Anyways, so I just decided to throw all of those items inside of the Speedy. I'd say that no more than four to five hours later, I got home and I took out those items that I had previously put inside of the bag and I noticed that the corners on my cosmetic case had turned pink. Now I love the color pink. However, I don't want it on my cosmetic case. And I was super bummed out, especially because I was like, okay, wait a minute, it's only like four to five hours at most, at most. But with the same movement that I was creating when I was carrying the bag, those corners ended up rubbing up against the lining and it caused them to turn pink. And it wasn't like it was a slight hue of pink. No, it was very, very noticeable. So I was, uh, I was bummed out. So one of the things that you can end up doing uh, to test out to see how saturated the lining is, so that way you don't experience the same thing, you can end up taking a white microfiber cloth and you can rub it up against the lining to see if anything comes off. So if uh, something comes off, then you'll see that it is heavily saturated and be a little bit more mindful of that. Uh, something that you can end up doing is also um, you can go for a purse organizer and the purse organizer will end up helping you know to not have any type of dye um, touch the you know your small leather goods that way you don't experience that same color transfer or you can just uh, be careful of carrying just light colored small leather goods with light colored interior or what have you that can be somewhat fussy uh, but that's what I personally end up doing but uh, yeah <laughs> it was a major major bummer so just be very careful as to uh, the type of small other goods that you're carrying if they're a little bit lighter or if they do end up absorbing that color very easily when it comes to the lining and the dye saturation of that lining. So even though I do love Damia Ben and I love that beautiful, beautiful red, that red can be somewhat deadly. 
Apparently, I don't learn from my mistakes, and I continue to do this, and this brings me to number four, overstuffing. Now, as many of you know, I like to push the envelope when it comes to what it is that I'm carrying inside of my bags. Whether it's a smaller bag or a larger bag, I like to see just how much I can carry with me. Now, sometimes that's great, and sometimes not so much. Case in point, my Chanel wallet on chain. Now, as many of you know, I love this bag. It's one of my best purchases, but the reason that I say that sometimes it's not the best idea to overstuff them is because it can end up stretching out the leather to the point of no return. Now, you know, I've had this going on, this wrinkling along the bottom for the last two years. Does it bother me now? Absolutely not. But if you are getting into luxury goods and if you want to carry a little bit more with you, by all means do it. However, just be a little bit more um, cautious as to how often you do it because the more and more that you continue to do it, it'll end up stretching out the leather again to the point of no return. And I should really end up taking a spoonful of my own medicine because I still do it. I still do it even though I know that I am I'm kind of altering how the bag is going to age because it'll continue to age this way. There's nothing that'll end up really helping it out. I know some people have ended, have ended up putting like pencils down here to try to make it not so noticeable because it looks like it's kind of collapsing on this side. It looks like it's a little bit poofier on that side. Um, I tried that out a couple times. It didn't really end up working out. Uh, but still, you know, even though, even though I know that this can potentially happen, I still continue to do it. So please learn from my mistakes. Do not overstuff your bags. Or if you are going to carry a little bit more with you, just try not to make too much of a habit of it um, every single time because you will get stuck with a wrinkly bag like mine, <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah, I just, I don't know what it is. I'm just like, yeah, let's put a little bit more. Let's put a little bit more. This baby packs a punch, but there's also a limit to how big that punch is. You know what I'm saying? So um, the wallet on chain and the whole wrinkly business down here is something that you definitely want to avoid and you can do that by not overstuffing your bag. That brings me to my last one, number five, authentication. In the beginning, when I first got started with luxury goods and I was going through the pre-love market, I had some really good experiences and I also had some major, major headaches when it came down to authenticity. My rule of thumb is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, but it doesn't hurt to double check. So I went through lengthy process after lengthy process of trying to get my money back when I found out that the item was not authentic and sometimes I'd get it back, other times I wouldn't, and it would end up leaving a really bad taste in my mouth. It made me super nervous to want to navigate those waters because I automatically thought that it would continue to happen over and over and over again. So now I do like to get my items sometimes double, triple authenticated, even if it comes from a reputable seller because it gives me peace of mind. And peace of mind to me is imperative because it allows me to enjoy the item that much more without necessarily having to worry, is it real? Is it not real? Uh, did I get taken for a ride type of thing? You know, I don't have that looming over my shoulder and I can just continue to, to enjoy my item, you know? So I would rather spend X amount of money on getting an item authenticated instead of, you know, instead of shelling out hundreds of thousands of dollars for a bag that is a replica that is being passed off as an authentic piece, you know? So that's something that, um, I, like I said, I learned along the way because I was, I, I guess you can say I was kind of naive and I was like, oh my gosh, this deal is too good to be true. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And um, I gave, uh, I gave a lot of people the benefit of the doubt and I felt bad asking questions about the authenticity. I felt bad asking them about this, that, or the other. And I feel like if it makes you, if it makes you feel better to ask those questions when you are going on a consignment shop or the pre-love market or whatever it is, whenever you're buying something that's not from the boutique, if it makes you better to ask those questions, go ahead and ask them because once again, it gives you that peace of mind. And by going and getting it authenticated either beforehand or after you get it, um, I think really ends up helping uh, helping out. A lot of these companies that do authentications will end up giving you the proper paperwork that you need if the item is deemed to be uh, a replica and you, if you already purchased it, they can help you out with that process. So like I said, to each their own, but for me, it, it I mean, it definitely gives me peace of mind and it makes me feel a whole lot better so that way I can continue to enjoy my item like it's nobody's business. All right, you guys, that does it for my mistakes. Have you made any mistakes during the time that you've been purchasing luxury goods? If so, let us know in the comment section down below. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.